Dark Days in America, September 1st, 2020, November 2nd, 2020. One. This is our comeuppance, or it is not. With a reassuring smile, a friend urges history on me. Kamala says, hmm. A Lenai Lenape neighbor stares through me in silence. I will not edit this past the due date. Regardless of what happens on election day, these are dark days and the darkness will cast long shadows into the days to come. But what do I know? I'm just an old white man with an opinion. Imagine that. Now, imagine a change deep down in our nation's soul if there is such a place. The unholy alliance of Catholics and evangelists think so. I wonder how long it will take for the return of fundamentalists to the notion that their co-conspirators are the Antichrist. History indeed. Two, that I don't know real oppression is attested to by my stock refrigerator and my frozen stocks. I'll survive, but so what? Unimaginable, the bullshitter's sign reads, no more BS. His tongue is in his cheek, but that guy driving around with this flag really believes what the flapping stands for, the integrity of the middle finger. Sad that it's come to this. We're all extras in a less than B movie. Next poem begins with a, um, an epigraph. How even gods fear the future. Chester Wilson the third. Dark matters. Now the universe is God and the supreme is still mysterious, rushing away from our notions of time and eternity. The past, the present, and the future try to walk into a bar, but we're all locked down or locked up, depending on. Monotheism didn't solve anything. We're still stupid, fornicating with bullshit, the issuance being our own beast. Astrophysicists are giddy, whether talking about the Big Bang or the Big Freeze, as if demise were beyond control. I got news for them. What's beyond is a billion years. Even the Buddha's promise of enlightenment abandons the here and now. I've been waiting for God to show up all my life. Even my imagination is disappointed. When the world is still, I can almost hear it die. Flesh. What's left? Dried fruit, smooth, stretched skin, a memory in veins, spidered out. Recall the delta where life began shitting in the sacred river for 6,000 years. Only the poor in spirit bathe there. Who could have predicted this? All of us. Freud smokes his last cigar. I couldn't give this up, the curtain of smoke hiding what Alfred and Carl suspected insecurity masquerading as what? Now, no matter, it is over. This will be my last cigar. Anna will not like it. Max will make her see the sense of it. Pain, bah, we never benefit from pain that never ceases. That salesman, that doctor in America, what do they know, calling it a touchstone? I quit the coca long ago, all on my own, no need of fellowship. I have never needed anyone. Professor Extraordinarius, I should have been content with Latin superlatives. Alas, no money, no prestige, dice breaker. 
I prefer the precision of German, which the Nazis corrupted. Oh, my dear, dear sisters, what has become of you? Let their smoke camouflage my tears. Let the morphine fuel dreams of an afterlife I could never see. In our dreams, I found the vision of the third eye. Late tonight, I begin the final dream. Explore the darkened inner landscape for that elusive peace. Gunfight at the Slow K Corral. We stare at each other. I think I know him, but I don't. It takes years to come to this conclusion. We volunteer at the same prison, enter through different gates. His key is a Bible, mine, a book of poetry. To me, they are the same, metaphoric truth. I've read several versions of his book. He'll never read mine. There I go again, thinking I know him. He comes with his wife, thin lips that never smile. There are no instructions in the good book for smiles. Joy, perhaps, but not laughter. It's no joke trying to get to heaven, even for believers. We, he and I, perhaps her, grew up watching westerns, drawing conclusions from colors, black hats and white, red skin and brown, ubiquitous pink and all those chiseled jaws. Over time, he reveals not surprising things, Navy vet, born again, little rectangles pushed out from the Pez dispenser of his mouth one at a time. I reveal my contradictions suddenly, army vet, poet, recovering alcoholic, wiping the smugness from his face, thinking that I know him, thinking always, I'm the faster draw, sarcasm blazing. Finally, he reveals, I got a deer this week on my property. We'll be selling the house soon, move to an apartment. I knew he had a gun. Weapon, my drill sergeant would correct, as we raised our rifles in one hand, clutched our balls with the other. This is my weapon, this is my gun, one is for killing, the other for fun. The hint of a smile, so self-assured in a faith he can see, that allows him to see the next life, fades from his face when he says, apartment. I thought I knew him. in the half of men. An ordinary guy has always been my disguise, unnoticed and listening to the silences of men. As a boy, I cried openly and too often, afraid of what this meant. No one believes where I've gone, nor the distance I have traveled to return. Don Gennaro slides along the limb of a tree, tugging on the light fibers of the world with his own from the Dan Tien, four fingers below the navel. I accepted this as true, although my friend Mike said Castaneda was a New York accountant making a buck from fantasy, but it was a woman who told me the location. I once moonwalked away from a young mafiosa my friend Joe tugging on my arm, laughing and a little scared. I knew we were safe. Joe was Italian. We were stupid, though. Everyone kills their own. I should have stayed in the kitchen with my sisters, my mother and all my brother's wives. They talked and cooked at the same time, laughing and crying at the same thing their ability to hold both at once. If men, if men hold complexity at all, it's not long. 
catching a pass, score, drop the ball. End zone celebrations annoy me. But these are boys, not men, and different. Perhaps the dancing they are doing is more honest. They know their meat. Why pretend? What a relief. Interrogation of an Archangel. Allow me to anticipate your questions. No, I do not exist, nor any of the others. Names should be a clue. Thrones and principalities, so medieval, so quaint. I am creator of all, a homeless addict, the raped hooker, a thief, a murderer. Do not place any false before me. I send no messengers in my place. I am the message, the meaning, the life. Count lines, neither seven nor nine, and not 14, no clues. Mathematics, another language, not my voice. Memorial Day, May 25th, 2020. Like other things, it's early this year or late. Some other superlative we're forced to use our world on steroids. Who knows what huge or great means anymore? Wordsmiths in the Caucasian house commandeering language as if we all didn't have dictionaries, Latin for dummies. Hydrofictions hosed again. Mystery and uh, mystery from the Greek verb mosteon to close the eyes or the mouth. If I bend a knee, can you be found among the dust? If words are whispered in prayer, are you close enough to hear them? If I leave myself at the gate of thought, have I entered your house? Are you there waiting in a silence that is deafening? Night. I penetrate the night the boy tied to the iron bed with a nylon, listening at the top of the stairs to conversations spoken in the orange living room light. Now, I go anywhere in my house like I own the place, discover my voice in the moonlit night slicing through the windows. What am I saying complaining about the high-pitched blur of the evening news? No one pays attention. I have said the same a million times before. People don't like a know-it-all. Better when you're vapid, one of them. Stupid ideas ending in a quick fix that never takes much effort or sacrifice. The way white folks talk so easily about racism, if they even believe it exists or if they do, how the mantle of our guilt will be sufficient in covering up this mess. Those fires in the street, let them burn and penetrate. <clears throat> On Hazelwood Drive, memory, the sense of humor, I keep losing things. In the mirror is a man I hardly know. I'm reluctant to say more. Dodging definition is easy when you're nimble on defeat. Life is hard when nobody wants to hear you complain. I thought I knew what personhood meant, but that was in the 50s. Nobody even mentions the 50s anymore. We won the war for the world. What else was left to endure? The rest is a blur. 
No one living looks like me. I hear the voices of the dead through muffled microphones. I don't understand pornography. Is there money in it? The last time I saw Paris will be the first time. It pleases me to have an enigma on my bucket list. To say bucket list in a poem is a guarantee not to get published. If you reveal too much, is this psychological bravery or emotional suicide? Am I clever, interesting, or just afraid? I've never been able to answer this question about myself. Portrait. Thunder without rain, self-contained. Seldom humble bumble, don't really fit. Killer wit, know it all, in thrall of angels. Haven't been anywhere where I'm comfortable. Still able to love. It feels I am fashioning a soul. The awareness slips through my lips like a composition describing a position that's never still. I will keep going. I'm not convinced we aren't gods. Scatological. Nobody wants to talk about defecation, urination. They'll go on and on about ruination, the defamation of a good name, as if we all didn't shit down some standing to piss. My personal physician is not overly impressed with seven to eight peas in the night, as if that weren't a record or at least cause for alarm. I sit down myself shedding the toxic masculinity of which I have been falsely accused. If we refuse to discuss our most basic tendencies, how will we ever be able to change our soiled under things? That I have to cough it out so as not to once again slide down the razor banister of a hemorrhoidectomy does not hold much interest outside my family who Truth be told, are tired of the sounds they are unable to ignore emanating from the bathroom. No longer just sophomoric humor, this is now a medical condition, as yet undiagnosed, which are the scariest kind. The inability to name a malaise could be what is universally wrong. Didn't we name everything in Eden wasn't that the first assignment? Did we fuck that up as well? I wish the world would get honest. There's nothing wrong with bodily functions except when something's wrong. How will you know how to measure up against the norm if you can't talk about it? That's the only way we survive. Sad if the word was flushed, no longer dwelt among us. And this is my last poem. Um, in response to a prompt from um, my friend and mentor and teacher, Leonard Gonterak, he asked to, us to uh, compose a poem. It didn't, have a, didn't really have a title, just a number. And so that started a process and I have um, sort of a group of these. And this is number 525. I want to thank everybody for coming and thank Larry and the other poets for inviting me. Number 525, how to ignore a spotlight. First, be angry. Allow yourself to live in it. Make a shelter of your anger. Set up a latrine, at least a metal pail and a compost pit at some distance where you will only grow flowers. Be patient, there is a lot of it, and you will experience phases 
which are the siren songs where most are shipwrecked. Celebrate longevity without giving in to its sweet smell. Finally, don't believe a word it whispers to you, especially in the dead of night where no light exists, where the absence of a spotlight is so familiar and convincing. Remember, this is where you started. This is where you found your voice. Thank you.